Hello and in this video we are going to look at adding actors to our stencil game. It's the latest in our line of, of, of video tutorials aimed at creating a simple game in stencil. Now in stencil actors are really the objects that you use in your game. Things like players, enemies, uh, pickups, like health and ammo and things like that and we're gonna we kind of treat them differently to how we've created the tiles you notice we've already created a tile set in the game and these are just the things we use as an environment we can't do anything with them they're just there to act as a level um, actors we're actually going to do some things with so we're going to go to act types here and let's just first of all just create a player so we want to cre create a player that we can move around our level. So the first thing I do, click here to create our actor type and I'm gonna call it player. And then click create. As soon as I've done that, the first thing I'm actually gonna need is to come up with a graphic for the actor. Uh, and unless I've got a graphic, obviously there's nothing gonna appear on the screen. And, and indeed it says this actor type contains no animations. Click here to add an animation. I must point out that you don't have to have an animated actor type. It just what it really means is it contains no graphics. So, if, and you'll recognise this screen. It's very similar to the, the thing we've had before when we're creating uh, tiles and, and, and sprites and things. So it asks us to come up with um, a graphic. Or, so I'm going to go to Add Frame, choose an image, making sure again that it's set to one. Choose image. And then I'm going to look in my sprite folder. I've got a sprite folder full of predefined sprites for the one that I want. And I've got a sprite there that I've called player. And you can see this is an animated sprite. Um, yours doesn't have to be, but I wanted to animate mine, so, so I've done that. So once I've, I've, I've done that, what I also need to do is set, um, think about the physics, how it's actually going to behave when it's in the level. Um, so if I click the physics tab at the top, again we're just going to focus on the general physics for the moment because most of you aren't going to create a game to start with where you're really making any kind of use of physics. So the act type you have, you really want it to be normal. Uh, you can set whether it can be pushed or not. Um, I would advise not um, having it so it can't be pushed. You can change that if you want and cannot move. Obviously it wouldn't be a lot of use for the player. Rotate, we don't want it to be able to rotate because that will kind of look strange. I mean, it, it rotates and flips about as it moves and not affected by gravity. So if it actually it's going to have uh, something normal and then no, like that. Um, and then what I need to do is I need to think about the controls that I'm going to have for my player and how he's actually going to be controlled with the keys or with another method. Now I'm going to use the keys and I'm going to go to this settings tab at the top which is the setting settings tab for the whole game. And you can see here I've got things called groups and controls here and we're going to need to use both of those things. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the controls tab and you can see right away it allows you to set up some predefined controls for your game and this is how I would advise you to, to set your controls up. You can do it in a slightly different way, but this is, I think, is the best way. So basically you can configure any key that you want for up, down, left, and right. And if I want to add more controls, it's very easy. And if I want to delete these and, and change them about, I can do. I'm quite happy for my game just having the arrow keys as my movement keys, up, down, left, and right. So I'm just going to leave those actually as they are so I'm going to click OK now the next thing I need to do before I actually start to uh, add my player to the level is I want to look at something called groups so I'm going to go on, on properties and here's my player I can describe it if I want to and then it just says choose group and you can see that stencil has a bunch of predefined groups I'm going to look at what what, what what they actually are in a minute. So if we go edit groups, um, what it basically means is uh, is it, that you can choose which type of actors and objects are allowed to collide with other types of objects. It sounds a bit confusing. But if I go onto onto players, so for instance players, you can see 
collide with tiles so you want that to happen you want that to be a thing because you want the the game to respond if your player hits the environment if it, if you had a game in which for instance you had a ghost you might want it to go through the tiles so in that case we'd, we'd flip that off but players is flicked on i could set it so i could collide with other players or with other actors for the moment i'm going to leave that switched off and then you'll notice that my tiles tab has the same thing tiles are allowed to collide with players and actors and that makes sense doesn't it because if we're saying that our player needs to be able to collide with the tile then surely our tile needs to be able to collide with a player so I'm, I'm, you can create new groups if you if you want to um, by doing create new if you've got additional types of, of, of character in your game but we're just going to leave it set like that for the moment uh, and I'm going to go back and just make sure that that's um, the player okay, so. right now the last thing I need to do is a behavior and this is where we're actually going to start doing some very very basic coding uh, and in fact really stencil is going to do the coding for you because if I click on behaviors choose a behavior to add to this act, act type of behavior is exactly what it sounds like it's something which we can configure for any character to give it a way it can behave give it things it can do it can respond it can move etc so let, let's have a look at that choose a behavior and I've got in here already you've got a bunch of built-in ones which, which stencil gives you which is actually really helpful because it makes it a lot easier so all things to do with like motions uh, the user interface uh, games effects visual effects motion but we're just going to go for controls and I've got an option in here for four-way movement, which is what I want, because I want it to be able to move up, down, left, and right. So I click that, and then four-way movement comes in. There's the behavior there, and it allows me to configure my control, and I've already done those, so all I need to do is go up, down, left, and right. The speed I'm going to leave at 30 but you can experiment with that if you want to and then something else you can experiment with is having different animations depending on the way your character is facing now I did do I do have options to do that but I'm not going to do it with this video but if you want your player to, to f actually physically look like he's turned left for instance when he's when he's walking left then you could create a sprite for that and add it as an animation here so you could set up all kinds of different sprites depending on the direction that it's, he's, he's walking in but I'm not going to do that for the moment so my behavior is kind of ready you need to make sure that you've activated any behavior or it won't start to work and when I've done that I can add it to the scene the final thing to say is you can add multiple behaviors to uh, an actor so this is just one of the things that it can do but if your if your player is also going to shoot or do other stuff then you can add other things as well okay so we'll come out and that we're going to go back into it sorry we're going to go back and add it to the scene now because we, we what we've set up the movement controls created a behavior sorted out the group and we're just going to go add to scene so to add to scene choose my level which is level one and then I simply place the player anywhere where I want on the grid and we're going to test that now so let's do test scene and while it's loaded because it takes a while to, to preview the game I'll pause the video and then we'll look out see what it looks like when it's done okay so my game is now uh, previewed in the, in the in the flash window here and let's see what we've got and if I, I need to click, click on the window and you can see there we go that I've got a little character that move around can move around the collision is set so it can't when it collides with the background it stops did you, you remember how easy that was to set up and uh, you don't have to worry about programming that and I'm already now a good chunk of the way towards creating my game because I've got a working level with a character that I can move around and that the collisions will work for so the next stage is to add some more objects to our game for things like uh, coins and enemies and stuff and we'll look at those in some upcoming videos bye for now